So this is what happens in Google. So we're going to do project rebrief, and then IBM sent out the messages to the wires to say, this is what's happening, this is who's doing what. Somebody in San Francisco saw that and then phoned me, I think maybe less than 48 hours ago, and said, oh yeah, we've got a better thing than rebrief now. So we'd like you to do that. And I'm like, no, no, we're really fine with rebrief. I'm like, no, no, like, you really have to do this one. So we're going to do something else, which is kind of like rebrief, right? But it's like the next evolution. So um, there you go, a little surprise for you. Now, <laughs> uh, uh, but really, actually, so Project Rebrief, uh, and the reason they wanted me to do that is because Project Rebrief really was an execution of a bigger idea. Uh, and the bigger idea was uh, a project which has been running for a number of years and hopefully will run for years more called Advertising Reimagined. Um, one of the great things about working with Google and YouTube is that, yes, we have a thriving business, but we also have uh, a, a bunch of guys who run the company who have like, a very visionary take on what we should be trying to do. So you know, everything we do, whether it is making great and amazing products like <coughs> YouTube or Google Search, or whether it's about serving ads, we should be shooting for the stars in all that we do. And the same is true of what's happening in terms of advertising and creative development. And I'm going to go on to share some really wacky Google bullshit in a second, don't worry. But the, the really, we're solving for a very simple problem, and one which continues to exist. Uh, which is we still need to make a really fundamental realignment happen in terms of the creative process that completely bakes digital and the ability to engage consumers uh, and engage businesses there uh, into that process. And I think at the moment what we have is that we have like a disjointed industry where sometimes it's amazingly baked in and we get amazing results and sometimes it's sitting somewhere in the periphery or it's treated as a channel or a media rather than actually being part of uh, like the enablement of this uh, kind of like brave new world. Um, so fortunately, we do talk a little bit about Project Rebrief. Uh, so this is what we did last year. And so you know, in, in terms of trying to help people understand what we were trying to achieve with advertising reimagined, uh, we, we launched Project Rebrief. Uh, and the, 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 the pr I don't know who's aware of Project Rebrief, but essentially, very simple concept. Uh, take some of the world's most iconic advertising campaigns uh, you know, from the last 40 years and then reimagine them through the lens of uh, what is possible today digitally or just kind of in general. Um, but what I really loved about it is the way we did that was to reconnect with the guys that made it, so the art directors and the creative directors who made those amazing campaigns happen uh, many years ago. Uh, so what I'd like to do is I'm going to play a short video just to give you a, a flavour for what Rebrief was about. The way the technology is used today, you've got handheld devices, you've got screens, you've got three screens. People can communicate, they can share and search. There are way too many ads on every single page. Too much focus on technology and not enough on people. The users are telling us what they're interested in, where they want to go. The first display ad basically said, find out more, click here. And then the 15 years that followed, that's basically the only innovation we saw. If you can think it, you can build it. If you have time to make it, you have time to make it wonderful. To come up with great display advertising, you need to first come up with just great advertising. I can't believe I ate that whole thing. You ate it, Ralph. Trying harder is still the best way to do business. You can drive a Volvo like you hate it. has left me pretty much in the past. I'm not sure that it can be done. Howie believes we're geniuses. I believe we're idiots, and we're both right. <laughs> My own impetus is a little bit of insecurity. Can you do it, champ? How do we tailor that for a banner? That's your job. <laughs> From my generation, that's absolutely science fiction. <laughs> I don't think we estimated the power of this. So, so from the ads they showed, I think one observation is that people were just uglier in the 70s. <laughs> <laughs>
he says that being born. Okay, uh, uh, so I, it's a really interesting concept. Take these people like legends in advertising who've made really iconic campaigns, connect them to people who are at the forefront of developing a kind of new advertising platforms, new marketing platforms, to see what you come up with. Uh, and I think there's one thing which is very much true, which is digital technology does not in any way replace our requirement for breakthrough ideas. Right? At no point in any of those kind of four examples did anybody think that the idea was not the core driving element of the iconic nature and success of that campaign. Um, and in fact, the, they went through a number of different iterations of what the solutions would look like, what the, what the, the eventual outcome would look like. And any of those that kind of like, veered away from the idea um, that kind of became too much of the technology essentially kind of failed in the eyes of the, uh, the, the, the people who were uh, judging, which essentially were the technologists and the creative directors we put together. Um, an example of kind of what came out of it, though, was uh, so you take the very iconic and maybe most globally known uh, Coke campaign, kind of teaching the world to sing, uh, and it's interesting what digital has enabled to happen through there. So, I mean, essentially what we were trying to do with the television advert was to give people the sense that Coca-Cola brought people together, that it kind of helped us to connect to each other, and that we were part of, like, Coke's community. But very much the sense we were doing that. We had to make lots of kind of, like, internal leaps to believe that. Um, and that would maybe actually stretch the credibility of maybe a more skeptical youth today. And so what they were able to do is to take the same idea, this kind of Coke connecting uh, friends and connecting communities and reimagine that digitally. And so what they did was they created a series of vending machines, 400 vending machines, placed them in places across the world, and then created apps that allowed people to take the hilltop idea and actually share a Coke with others. And they were able to share a Coke with people they knew through their Facebook and YouTube uh, and, uh, and, and Twitter uh, accounts, and also share it with people they didn't know. So gift it to people who are near the machine, right? Now, of course, it's a ridiculous idea that, you know, it, writ large, we just don't have enough machines, it's not going to work. But you could easily imagine how, like, vending machines might uh, grow in the future. But what I loved about it was it showed that what digital does is it takes things away from being so conceptual to making them, like, connect in the real world too. It's not just a bit, but it's a bits and bytes that actually this can be our connection point to what's, what's really there. Um, and actually, what, uh, lots of what these creative directors end up saying about Rebrief was, wow, I, I didn't realize that we could reach into people's homes, not just through screens, but actually by being there, reach into communities uh, and be there in ways that we would never have thought possible. So uh, that, that, that was Rebrief. But we, we, I think we realized that um, maybe we were even not aiming high enough in terms of the pace of revolutionary change in the marketplace with Rebrief. Um, one thing we did notice was, uh, we very much connected with the creative directors, the art directors, who are responsible for these campaigns. But actually, going back to some of the, the older ones, like uh, Volvo and, and, uh, and Avis, they said, and one of the things we learned from them, was that there was a revolution going on in the late 60s, like kind of the Madman era, uh, maybe just after, um, where art and copy were coming together, right? Where it used to be the agencies completely separated their art function and art direction from copy creation, and essentially, one would just hand off their idea to the other. They would hand off their copy to the art, the art house, and then via ad templates, they would put them together. Like, it wasn't a single creative mind working on this. It was essentially a, a factory. Uh, and what changed in the 60s, and what changed in the early 70s, was we put these two together, and art and copy was born. And we started to make kind of integrated advertising that was very idea-led. Um, and actually, that's inspired the copywriters to be better, inspired the art directors to be better. And it made the whole of advertising like a more robust industry and a more creative industry. And we realized that actually we hadn't addressed this with Rebrief enough. Um, because something else is happening now where not only are art and copy together, uh, but we then have code. We then have what's happening with technology. So forget about digital media, and maybe this is where Rebrief wasn't aiming high enough, was it was lots about digital execution. But actually, it's about the person. It's about the role. It's about the role of technology. It's about the role of technologists, or whatever we call them, like, I, I don't know, like electronic ninjas and whatever else bizarre tales they have in these, these companies. But actually, that's a really important function. And maybe for the first 10 years of digital, and, and Dean can probably give us a, a big, on a grand insights into this as, through his career, um, these were baton passes. It used to go from the art and copy team and be given to the digital team and say, do something with that. Execute or amplify on top of that. It wasn't part of the creative process itself. It was like a result. It was like a, an executional part of that. Um, and so, but that's changing now, right? And like, actually, what we see is in the best of campaigns, these three disciplines sit seamlessly together. And as clients, that we should be asking 
that our agencies operate in this way, right? That we get the best of the idea that can be pushed through all this at once, not pushed through a series of filters, and that all we really get is like the best of art done in the lowest common denominator way, to, way we can get through here. And so that's where we came up with Art, Copy and Code. So this is the next iteration of Project Rebrief, which is actually it's about understanding that organisational change and what happens if you really put all three of these together in the creative process. So I've got a short video that I'd like to play, uh, which is actually on a, a web browser. Um, it's a little bit of a gimmick, but basically what it does is it's just a dynamic, it's a dynamic video which hopefully updates with uh, 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 information gathered from wherever we are and whatever's happening right now. Right, that one's a busted flush. Right, we'll go back to the presentation and I'll send you all that link and it'll be marvellous. And you'll actually, so when you get the link, what I'll do is I'll give you all your own personal version of the art, copy and code film. Um, but essentially what it showed is, actually in terms of taking some of the strands together, in terms of the devices we have, uh, the data that's available, the environments that we operate within, the uh, stimulus that we are searching for, the stimulus that we are going to receive, um, are all variables which we can play with as marketers. Right? These things are not static anymore. And actually the best of campaigns will leverage that, that the fact that the, they can be dynamic and we can change them. And we'll make things more relevant to ourselves by making them more personal or more topical or kind of uh, more, more real time. Um, and, and so essentially what we're doing with uh, Art, Copy and Code, if Project Rebrief was one experiment, now what we're doing is launching a series of different experiments, some of which, by the way, I don't quite get. But you know, anyway, we'll talk about them for a bit. Um, we're, that's a series of experiments uh, to try and show different aspects of what we mean by this kind of like this coming together of art, copy, and code. Uh, we're making it happen with some uh, large brands, some brands which uh, we work with and we think have like a very pioneering outlook on how marketing um, uh, and advertising sh should work, and also with uh, visionary creatives. So not necessarily people who have iconic success from the past, but people we think that are breaking the molds today. I'm sure you may recognize these people or you may not, but the important thing is actually like trying to see if we can push the industry forward and maybe even deliver some real business benefit to these brands whilst doing it. Um, there's uh, six trends which we are focusing those experiments on, and I'll, and I'll share examples of a couple of those afterwards. Uh, the first is connected objects. Um, so you know, I think with uh, the, the vending machine and the Coke example of Project Rebrief, that's what we're looking at, right? A, a machine which which is maybe considered to be like a dumb implement. I put my coins in, I get my can out. Actually, could that be so much more? Could that be like a community or social hub in the real world for Coke to rally itself around? And would that make like a much better return on investment for all those vending machines they put everywhere? Um, Reimagined canvases. There's still quite a lot of, let's create the 30 second TV ad or the print ad and then use that to essentially create our digital asset. Is that really pushing the boundaries of what's creatively possible hard enough. I actually think that some of the stuff that Dean was showing is just incredibly inspiring in terms of how far they're pushing it. Um, I don't think that is like the, the standard or the average that we get back from campaigns. And, uh, you know, and I think that's in part because we're not putting the code part right at the heart of the idea. Um, audiences of one, I think, is going back to the, the, both the data point but also the addressability point. So you know, we're able to, in a non-creepy way, um, personalize advertising in a way which, uh, I say that, um, uh, personalized advertising in a way which really wasn't possible. I mean, actually, so thinking about the direct marketing component, that's all about personalization, right? We know that the response rates on personalized mail or personalized response versus, versus others um, go up dramatically. Uh, and actually, you know, data on, uh, the, uh, through the web is really helping to drive that. Uh, collaborative storytelling is about where we get involved. So no longer does uh, advertising need to be one way, but instead it can be two way. In fact, it's going to work best if it's two way. Uh, useful marketing, driving utility rather than just awareness, and data stories. So actually, like the rise of the infographic and being able to use that, uh, that, that requirement for visualization as a way of telling our stories in a better way, which kind of address the size and scale of our brands. Um, but let me talk about a couple of examples. Uh, so the first one is the talking shoe. Has anybody heard of our talking shoe? I know that you're all going to be asking me to order one after you've seen this short video. And so let me show you a short video of the talking shoe. Oh, that's me. Right. This one works. This is super boring. <laughs> That's more like it. I love the feeling of wind in my laces. Here we go. Are you a statue? Let's do this already. Because you're 
you're on fire. And fuego. So the talking shoe is obviously ridiculous, right? Um, I mean, I don't want my shoe to tell me that I'm a fat, lazy get. It's like, <laughs> but I mean, like, think of it not as like a product innovation. It's, that's not the point. But the point is that you know the idea of being able to, you know, like the amount of connectivity we have, and we update what's going on in our life. But actually, the idea of having products that do that for us, having like our world connected to our communities, both social and uh, both uh, virtual and, and in the real world, is, is really quite interesting. And that's made possible by bringing together a whole bunch of different creative and technological strands like Bluetooth and NFC and RFID, as well as great ideas about what people would really find entertaining or useful um, or, or wonderful. Um, a second is on reimagined canvases. So thinking about what's different about creating stuff for the web. And uh, I think, so Dean talked a little bit about Vine before, um, and, uh, you know, and the, the, the idea of like short capture film is really kind of big at the moment because we're just lazy and we want things to be like that. We don't want to spend any more time than we have to. Um, so this one is a pretty straight forward video. Introducing an experiment in filmmaking for the web. A series of short films designed to leave you on the edge of your seat featuring... That's it, five seconds, right? You've only got five seconds to make the whole film. And so we've set that challenge to a whole bunch of different experimenters. Uh, but actually it has some really important uh, consequences. So for instance, advertising time lengths on the internet for video are way shorter than they are for the 30 second television ad. We need to get better at telling our brand story in a much shorter time as well as being able to do it more often. Um, I'm just going to share one final example, which is on useful marketing. Uh, uh, so that's about, you know, ads uh, can be about just pressing out our message as we heard with like the original Coke stuff, but they can also be useful if we can create utility through our advertising itself, then we stand a better chance perhaps of engaging and continuing to uh, engage users. So we helped kind of Volkswagen <coughs> think about a more uh, social way to drive. Uh, so there is a terrible video which I won't share, but essentially what we did was we created uh, an app which is connected through Google Plus uh, and it allows you to kind of socially interact with the cars you're passing. You see mates in the street, you can give them little virtual fist bumps in your car, automatically tracks your driving, uh, hopefully gives you some maybe hints and tips. It helps people know where you are if you're connecting with others and it allows you to sh share your journey, share what you're up to. So again, kind of like, like taking that always on connectivity and the ability to do it seamless, seamlessly and easily um, into kind of like an overall app. It's just about making the driving experience more social and more useful. I will share the video. Um, so what I'd tell you to do is go to artcopycode.com. You'll see the video that you didn't see at the beginning, um, and you'll see a whole bunch of the other experiments that we are helping uh, uh, people to uh, land to try and reimagine advertising. Thank you.